Okay, this is the same as the previous example. Um, it's going to be formatted slightly differently and we're going to show our workings on the retained earnings. In the previous example, I split out the uh, retained earnings at the date of acquisition and post acquisition. And this time it's just presented as a single balance sheet uh, as a year after the date of acquisition. So this is the statement of financial position on the end of the year 2010. The parent acquired 100% of the subsidiary on the 1st of Jan 2010. So it's one year of trading. So first of all, we need to work out the retained earnings. That's our first step because this figure here, 20,000, will have included some of the earnings um, pre-acquisition, which we don't want to include in our consolidated statement. So let's just do a little working here. Uh, we'll do retained earnings. Um, and we'll just do two columns, one for the parent and one for the subsidiary. Now this is post acquisition so post acquisition retained earnings of the parent is 60,000 oops is 60,000 post acquisition of the subsidiary is 20,000 remember this balance sheets at uh, a year after the date of acquisition so this is post ac earnings so we need to just remove the pre-ac so we're going to remove and the figures given here in the question subsidiaries retained earnings at date of acquisition i.e. pre-ac is 10,000 so we can just reduce that figure by 10 which gives us a sum of Well, what do you know? It's 10. Um, and we can bring this figure down, which gives us a total uh, for post acquisition earnings of these two numbers added together. So it's 60 plus 10 is 70,000 post ac earnings. So what we've done here, we've taken the total post ac we've removed the pre-acquisition earnings of the subsidiary only because uh, that's when we took control of the subsidiary and that's where from that date we uh, consolidate the earnings so that we took out pre-ac gives us 10,000 add those together uh, and that gives us 70,000 instead of 80,000 post-ac retained earnings so we can put that figure straight in here um, as the consolidated post acquisition earnings and let's just call that working uh, one so we can just see what we're doing working one retained earnings uh, just make that easy to see retained earnings um, uh, and then the rest of the consolidation is as previously so we do not include the investment in the subsidiary other assets we simply add together doing that in the wrong place P plus S parent plus subsidiary other assets add those together uh, we ignore the equity shares of the subsidiary uh, but we include the equity shares of the parent so that's parent only the retained earnings we've done or we've worked out from this calculation here uh, as you see if we just added across that would be 80,000 but that would include 10,000 of the pre-ac earnings so we need to remove that via this little working here to give us 70,000 instead the liabilities we just add one to the other P plus plus S and it's always nice to see that the uh,
balance sheet balance sheets. So we've got 97,000 in total assets and 97,000 in equity plus total liabilities. Uh, so that balances. Uh, right, let's just quickly summarize the main issue with this, this question. Uh, is that we are one year on from the date of acquisition and we have increased or the subsidiary has increased its retained earnings from 10,000 at the date of acquisition to 20,000 a year later. So by this working we just need to remove the pre-ac earnings 10,000 here from the post-ac balance sheet. So this number comes from here make a little note 20,000 20,000 this 60 comes from here just identify that makes it clearer uh, we take off the 10,000 which is the pre-ac earnings gives us a total of 60 for the parent 10,000 for the subsidiary post-ac Total post act earnings to the group, 70,000, and then that figures here from working one. Uh, and that's it. That's the statement of financial position uh, one year on.